to this uh, new maximum level that's been rated at. Talk to nuclear engineer Arnold Gunderson. He's in uh, Vermont in the US. Mr. Gunderson, thanks for being on RT. Uh, you've described yourself before this, the uh, Fukushima disaster, as Chernobyl on steroids. Now, how worried should the world be that this disaster is now officially rated as highly as what we saw in Ukraine 25 years ago? Well, the, the sad thing is that um, it should have been recognized three and a half weeks ago, and more people should have been evacuated out sooner. Um, I think it, it is an indication now that the Japanese, both the, the TEPCO and the government, understand how severe the accident is, but it's really um, uh, three weeks too late. So why has it taken so long? Why has it taken the government this long to put this uh, official status on it now, if you like? It's already jumped up once before, hasn't it? I, I think, you know, there's a lot of things here. The Japanese are really committed to nuclear, and so there was a, a, a lot of vested interest that wanted to downplay it. You know, I studied the Three Mile Island accident, and I studied Chernobyl, and, and now this one, and it, it's pretty standard practice that when uh, when things are breaking you you seem to look for the best uh, alternative as opposed to the most realistic one and i think the japanese wanted a, a, a nice outcome and believed uh, whatever instruments gave them that that indication so what are we looking at here i mean taking what you said earlier on about the uh, you know the comment you made about chernobyl on steroids i mean are we likely to see huge areas of wasteland around the fukushima plant that no one's going to be able to inhabit for decades i mean japan's a very densely populated country it's going to have a huge impact if that's the case isn't it well, the, the luck, if there's any luck here, and, and really there isn't, but if there's any luck here, it's been that most of the time the wind has been going out to sea. Had the wind been going the other way, I think we'd see that scenario you just described already. Um, the, the worst case is the Unit 4 fuel pool, which is, um, has enormous amounts of plutonium and depleted uranium, like, like you had in the last segment. Um, if that catches fire, uh, it, it could devastate a... a a, a large it area. Fire this far down now, um, they've got power back to that plant. Is there a danger that that could still happen then? Are things still very not in control there, as you see it? Yeah, they, they don't have power to the fuel pool cooling systems at any of the reactors. And Unit 4 is the worst because that fuel pool has the freshest fuel. It's the, the most physically hot. And on, in addition, Unit 4 has got a crack in the side of it. So they, even if they had water to cool it, it's going to run out the crack. Um, that's the toughest, uh, the, the toughest problem on site right now. And what's your view over who is the best person to deal with this initially? and as the weeks have gone by, should it have been TEPCO? After all, I guess they are the people that know all about it. But there again, they, I guess, want to look at their profits as well, don't they? And they want, they want the best outcome for the company. Um, should the government maybe have done more and stepped in and diverted more central resources? I mean, it's easy for us to sit here and say that now, but of course, Japan was in a heck of a state at the time. Yeah, it's hard to second guess in, a, in an emergency. But again, I think that... Um, uh, you're right. They had a they had a tsunami to worry about too. But the government should have stepped in sooner, more aggressively. You know the data we were getting out of TEPCO uh, was was not good. You know wrong numbers kept coming out for weeks, and it's hard to make good decisions when you have bad data. Well, Arnold Gunderson, thanks for being on the program, nuclear engineer. Uh, as you are talking to us from uh, Vermont in the U.S. There, appreciate it. Thank you.